Hi everybody, uh, we're going to take a look at melting in this system diopside plus anorthite. We're going to take this bulk composition here, BC, that's 80% anorthite and 20% diopside. As we begin heating this system, we're going to start out with a rock that has 80% anorthite crystals, that's what this bulk composition means, so ex excuse me, backwards. 20% anorthite crystals and 80% diopside crystals. That's what the rock looks like. It's a rock with two minerals, plagioclase, feldspar, and a pyroxene. As we heat that rock, uh, some strange things are going to happen. We're going to hit 1274, and that's when we're going to create the first melt. But the melt won't look like the bulk composition. It's going to be much more anorthite rich. It's going to start melting at the eutectic. It actually doesn't matter what bulk composition we pick anywhere in this system. No matter whether we start here or there or way over here, melting will always begin at the same temperature, 1274, and it'll always look like the eutectic, which is where this liquidous uh, surface for anorthite and diopside meet. And that liquidus is at about 42% uh, anorthite or so. Now, as we take our rock and heat it up to 1274, something else that's maybe, maybe a little bit strange is, is going to happen. We'll continue adding heat, but the temperature will not increase. All of the energy that we add to the system will cause both diopside and anorthite to melt. Now, which one will melt out first? Well, all we have to do is look at which side of the eutectic that we're on. Eventually, when we're done melting, the liquid should look like the bulk composition. If we start with something that's 20% anorthite and we melt it, we should end up with something that is 20% anorthite when we're done, except the anorthite is now liquid instead of crystalline. And that means that we have to end up over here on the diopside side plus liquid side. The only way we could do that is if anorthite melts out first. So the fact that the bulk composition is hitting the diopside plus liquid field means that we're going to sit at the eutectic until all of the anorthite is gone. Now, diopside will also melt at the same time, just not as at faster rate. When all the anorthite's gone, there's only diopside left. And so as we melt diopside, uh, that will push the liquid back towards the diopside composition. But it also allows us to leave the eutectic. As we add heat, once the anorthite is gone, we, uh, temperature will now begin to increase. So pushing the, t the system up in temperature and towards diopside, the sum of those two vectors will drive us along that diopside plus liquid liquidus. And the liquid will migrate from the eutectic composition. It'll make its way up this curve until it hits the bulk composition. Once the liquid equals the bulk composition, then by definition, we're done melting. It means that we've melted the system entirely. There's no diopside left, and any further heating will just cause the system to get hotter. So just to review, if we take a rock that has this bulk composition of diopside plus anorthite, the first liquid will be the eutectic. Uh, that eutectic liquid is at about 42 weight percent anorthite here, where these two curves meet. Could be different in other kinds of systems. That system... Uh, as we add heat, the will remain constant in temperature at 1274 until all of the anorthite is gone. How do we know it's gone? Because our bulk composition is sitting over here in the diopside plus liquid field, and we eventually have to migrate there. And the only way we can get there is getting rid of all the anorthite first. Uh, all the anorthite will disappear at 1274, just as it began. We've added a lot of heat in the meantime. Any further heating once anorthite is gone will allow the liquid to heat up and for the liquid to migrate up to the liquidus until it reaches this point. And then that means that the system is completely molten and that would happen at a temperature of about 1350, about 1350 degrees.